Hey everyone, I'm Joe and today I'm reviewing Burning Chrome by William Gibson. This is a science fiction short story collection. It is cyberpunk set in the near future and it contains 10 short stories in total. William Gibson is best known for Neuromancer and for that book he is known and credited for creating the cyberpunk subgenre itself. That book was released in 1984. This was released in 1982, two years earlier, and that I think is an important factor which I'll get to later in the video. I'm going to briefly talk about all 10 short stories, some of them in more detail, some of them I'll only very briefly gloss over, otherwise this video will be super long. And the first short story is Johnny Mnemonic. This is set in the Sprawl universe. Johnny, the main character, is a courier. He has an implant in his head and he carries sensitive information for big corporate uh, entities around and it's an interesting story they made a film of this in the mid late 90s I believe with Keanu Reeves it's a sort of film that is both bad but you kind of like it because of how bad it is and frankly I'm really happy that I've read this because now I know where they got the ideas for that film for which I really do quite like it still has the same feel to it and indeed the same as a lot of Gibson the city and the world well the earth in it is very dark gritty and lived in and the atmosphere in the book and indeed obviously the film is really interesting Gibson has got a very unique style in regards to creating these urban environments and in Johnny Mnemonic it really stands out and it's just really well written and just lovely to see it really is the second short story is The Gernsback Continuum. I can't really talk about the plot of this because it's kind of weird. And actually it's the most trippy and most sort of psychedelic of any short story or any or anything I've actually ever read by William Gibson. William Gibson is normally kind of sort of slightly drier than this. This is very surreal and frankly it's quite nice to see him writing that's a little bit different from his normal writing style. And I'm happy that I've read this one as well. The third short story is Fragments of a Hologram Rose. This one I can't really say anything about because it's, it's the shortest sto short story in this collection, at about eight or nine pages long. And frankly, I have no idea what William Gibson was trying to say in this one. Normally, he has some sort of significant point he wants to say, or he's trying to write about an interesting environment or setting. In this one, Fragments of a Hologram Rose. I have no idea what he's trying to achieve with it because it just didn't achieve anything for me personally. If you understand it, please let me know because I'd be quite interested to know what it actually was meant to be about. Next up, we have The Belonging Kind. This is an interesting and curious mix between cyberpunk and an alien encounter story. The city that it takes place in, which is an American city, basically helps build up the atmosphere of this book. This book, this story is all about atmosphere and the feeling of the city because unlike his other cities which are normally dark and grim which this definitely is this is also very eerie and creepy and the way the character sort of goes about in the city doing what he does it's just really brilliant sense of eeriness and it's really nice to see something a little bit different a little creepy from Gibson and hopefully there'll be some more by him at some point that has the same weird feel the next two short stories are Hinterland and Red Star Winter Orbit. Both of these short stories are set in space. They're both more sort of traditional science fiction in a way than neither of them are cyberpunk. And they're both asking questions about society, where humans fit into society and how society works as a whole and what can break society apart. They're both set in the same world, in space, different parts of it and they're just quite interesting little stories and it's quite nice to see a very more traditional sort of straightforward science fiction story from Gibson Anglo. Normally he writes a bit more unusual in many respects. The next one is New Rose Hotel. This is set in the Spore universe. Again, this is corporate espionage. It has a vaguely similar feel to it than um, Johnny Mnemonic had. And it did has similarities between Neuromantha it's an interesting one, but nothing exceptional. It doesn't do anything that you didn't expect. 
it just continues the feeling of this dark and grim world that has truly been lived in in every single respect, you know, the cars, the vehicles, everything is just sort of worn down and just so worn and lived in. The next short story is The Winter Market. This is the one that I made a point of mentioning the year this book was published at the start of the video. This, to me, is a precursor short story to this fall and Neuromancer itself. It's kind of not quite the sprawl, not quite cyberpunk. It's kind of like an early pre-cyberpunk and it's got a really curious feel to it. And I actually think this short story in particular is really quite important because of the fact that this is obviously the precursor to Neuromancer and to cyberpunk. So people always say that yes, um, Neuromancer is the first sort of full-on cyberpunk novel. That is true, but this is the precursor to it. And I think it's actually a very important story to read if you're reading science fiction to try and you know, learn about the origins of where things started up. And I'm really happy I read this one. The ideas in it are interesting and the feel of it in, in particular is very, very important because it's not quite normal science fiction, it's not quite cyberpunk, it's in some weird middle zone and it's just a really interesting one and one that I'm really happy that I've read. The next one is Dogfight. This is a slightly peculiar one because frankly it doesn't feel as though it fits in the short story collection itself. It is about um, radio controlled planes dogfighting which sounds peculiar and frankly it kind of is. I don't quite know why this was included in this short story collection. It doesn't fit the feel of any of the others. I mean some of them have different feels anyway but this really doesn't know. This feels drastically different. But I suppose in that way it's a bit of a departure from everything else. So, and obviously being so close to the end of the book makes you have a bit more of a surprise ending in that part I suppose. So it's well worth reading still. Just odd. It doesn't quite fit. The last short story is indeed the total story called Burning Chrome. I couldn't help thinking of another short story called The Girl Who Was Plugged In by James Tiptree Jr, always known as Alice Sheldon. Alice Sheldon is often quoted by Gibson as being his inspiration for writing Neuromancer. So this one feels kind of like a halfway between um, her writing style and his writing style, which I think is a really curious mixture. And it's quite an interesting short story as well. And I, I actually think it's very important to read because of that reason. It's a history of science fiction, well, a very, a very small part of it anyway, in one short story. So overall, this is a good, solid short story collection. All ten of the stories in it are fairly solid. And frankly, this is a very important book to science fiction and cyberpunk in particular because it builds on where cyberpunk was sort of originally from and it's building it into pretty much into what it's become nowadays. It's well worth reading, especially if you want to experience you know, the history of a particular part of science fiction, which is obviously what I'm trying to do over the last year or two. And I'm overall just really happy that I've read this. I'll definitely be rereading it in another year or two because there's more you can get out of these short stories, despite their short length. There's more to them than meets the eye. And the writing style and the world that Gibson's create in this are all really really good and I'm really happy that I've read it. So with that said that's it for this video. If you've read this or any of the short stories in this collection then please let me know. I'm quite interested in what other people think about this because the short stories in it really are curious and the amount of ideas and the range of ideas that he writes about is quite impressive. So other people's thoughts and opinions are really greatly uh, wanted frankly of any kind. All my social media links can be found in the description box below, as they always are. And with that, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.